Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, June 23rd. From the Express News, my name is Luis Vasquez, and this is your Express Briefing. All of the stories you need to know to start your day. You can expect partly cloudy skies and a high of 94. And you may want to keep your umbrella handy because according to the National Weather Service, thunderstorms are possible for the remainder of the week. San Antonio actor Jesse Borrego's new indie film, Phoenix, Oregon, hits DVD and Blu-ray on Tuesday. The film is streaming online with several charity screenings as well. We'll speak to him and have the rest of our roundup of what's new in home entertainment this week. Also today, look out for a preview of the annual Pride Bigger Than Texas celebration, which will mostly be online this year. It will, however, be screened at some venues that have reopened. Later in the day, watch out for news from the Texas Education Agency, which is expected to announce guidance for reopening schools this fall. And we'll be at the Evening City Council briefing when updated coronavirus numbers will be released. And now, your top headlines of the day. An analysis by the city's chief financial officer released Monday cast out on Via Metropolitan Transit CEO Jeff Arndt's dire prediction of large budget deficits and severe service cuts due to the coronavirus pandemic and its economic fallout. I would not use the term cook the books, but I am frustrated, said Mayor Ron Nirenberg, who had requested the city analysis of Via's budget forecast. I'm disappointed that many transit-dependent riders who are among the most vulnerable of our residents were made to believe they'd be left out of our city's recovery efforts. Bruce Selkraig takes a closer look at the numbers and the developing disagreement between the mayor and the leaders of the city's transit agency. Effective Monday, all businesses in Bear County and San Antonio must require customers and employees to wear masks under orders handed down from County Judge Nelson Wolf and Mayor Ron Nirenberg. If businesses don't comply, they face fines of up to $1,000. Rafael Quaim, a 29-year-old healthcare worker, said he felt safer shopping at local Walmart knowing that everyone else around him is wearing masks. Sometimes it's frustrating knowing that COVID is still out there, that you might not know who has it or who doesn't have it, he said. Reporter Joshua Fector talked to shoppers at a couple local stores where people seem to take the new order in stride. Find out what they had to say at expressnews.com. Two of the nation's most influential experts on the coronavirus pandemic, both based in Texas, are calling for an independent, nonpartisan investigation of the U.S. response to the novel coronavirus modeled on the nonpartisan 9-11 Commission. We must prevent this from happening again, said Gerald Parker, who directs the pandemic and biosecurity program at Texas A&M's Bush's School of Public Service. This is not going to be our last pandemic. Lisa Gray and Ben Wormand examine how politics play a role in such an investigation, as well as what kind of questions the experts want answered. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus traditionally has focused on issues such as the condition of migrant detention centers, the separation of children from their parents at the U.S. southern border, and reforming antiquated immigration law. They're all critical issues that will remain on its agenda, but the caucus has begun to widen its footprint to include issues that may not get the same amount of ink, but are just as meaningful. Columnist Elena Yala explains how it comes with a shift in leadership. Next up are your need-to-know headlines. You can find all of these headlines and more in your Express News subscription. The number of COVID-19 cases continued to rise sharply Monday across Bear County, with more than 274 people confirmed to have the virus, pushing the total past 7,000 since the start of the pandemic. Governor Greg Abbott pleaded with Texans on Monday to better protect themselves against the coronavirus, acknowledging that the virus is now spreading at an unacceptable rate as hospitals fill. Despite a surge in COVID-19 cases, Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf said he would not support a return to stay-home orders because of the economic devastation that would result. U.S. Rep. Lloyd Doggett has signed on to legislation taking on the drug industry, specifically two bills aimed at preventing price gouging for coronavirus drugs, many of which have benefited from taxpayer-funded research and development. Sheriff Javier Salazar said the Bear County Sheriff's Office will review its use of force policies following a string of high-profile police killings across the country that have reignited conversations on policing and race. The Express News editorial board writes, 
In revolting comments broadcast in an unedited version of a podcast, Carrie Cheshire, Vice President of Texans for Fiscal Responsibility, a project of Empowered Texans, and Tony McDonald, General Counsel of Empowered Texans, mock Governor Greg Abbott's use of a wheelchair. The San Antonio apartment owner who locked out an estimated 50 tenants for failing to pay rent amid the coronavirus pandemic has agreed to sell a lawsuit brought on by one of those tenants. White evangelical support for President Donald Trump dropped by more than 10 percentage points the week that protests over George Floyd's killing spread across the country, according to an analysis of recent polling data. The Major League Baseball Players Association rejected the league's proposal for a 60-game regular season, placing the onus back on Commissioner Rob Manfred, who may now implement a shortened season in the absence of an agreement. A month ago, 12-year-old Hank Harris was looking for a way to help his mother pay the bills. A lawn service, he thought, might be just the thing for an enterprising boy too young to enter the regular workplace. Vincent T. Davis tells the story of the young man's commitment and the community that helped him get his business off the ground. And now, the fun stuff. Don't toss those meat trimmings in the trash. They have potential to become your next great meal. Chuck Blunt talked to the local experts and they share their tips on how to make rib tips less of a mystery and more of a meal. Incarnate Word football player TJ Wright and his UIW teammates have worked to lend their support to the Black Lives Matter movement. Meanwhile, Texas A&M quarterback Kellen Mond is receiving praise for his comments about a statue on campus. San Antonian Joshua Franco is scheduled to challenge title holder Andrew Maloney for a version of the WBA Super Flyweight Championship tonight. Franco's the underdog, but his trainer likes his chances. Opening week for high school boys basketball is little more than four months away, but Wagner's schedule is already ambitious. The San Antonio Area Baseball Coaches Association Senior All-Star Game will be July 2nd at Wolf Stadium. The Sub-6A game starts at 4 p.m., Class 6A at 7 p.m. Check out ExpressNews.com for a look at the rosters. The San Antonio Museum of Art is offering free memberships this summer to educators as a show of appreciation for their work shifting to online learning. That was your Express Briefing for Tuesday, June 23rd. My name is Luis Vasquez. Consider becoming an Express News subscriber to get in-depth coverage on all the stories you heard today. Also, be sure to rate and review this podcast in your Apple Podcast app as it really helps the show. Have a wonderful day, everyone.